My last Batman training video was by far one of the most popular videos on this channel. I feel that training not just for one thing, but for as many different skills as possible is an awesome ambition to have. Truly functional strength and power, but also brain power, also mobility, flexibility. Batman is peak human. He can do pretty much anything. And so to continue the 100,000 subscriber celebration, I felt this would be an excellent topic to return to. Not only that, but while I stand by everything I discussed in the first video, the fact remains that I am constantly learning new things as a result of running the Bioneer. So this is the new Batman training program for 2020, incorporating entirely new elements such as functional strength training with kettlebells, metabolic conditioning and more. This is a two-part series. In this part, I'll be talking about kettlebells, club bells, hybrid exercises and functional training. In part two, I'll introduce metabolic conditioning, calisthenics and meditation. Oh, and keep in mind that this is not a program for beginners. For that, check out my Batman Begins routine. Batman is big, strong and powerful, and he plows forwards to mow down his opponents. He is also highly functional. Batman is not at all interested in aesthetics or about breaking records even. He wants to build a fighter's physique and one that can also take blows, handle leaps across rooftops and lift heavy objects off of trapped civilians. He needs to be quick, powerful and unstoppable. Some might approach a training program like this by sticking with the classical compound lifts, the big three. But the problem with relying purely on these lifts is that they actually leave a lot of gaps. One of the criticisms I've often heard levelled at functional training is that you can't be strong at something. So you can't be strong at baseball, for instance. You can be strong, full stop. So that means that something like swinging a heavy baseball bat in order to try and build functional strength for baseball doesn't make any sense because you can't become stronger at baseball. But that doesn't really track. Swinging a heavy baseball bat would improve your grip strength as well as training rotational strength. If all you do is squat, deadlift and bench press, then you actually aren't doing anything for your rotational strength. And as such, you won't only be weaker at swinging a bat, but also at throwing a punch or grappling an opponent. There's a Batman pun there somewhere. While I'm not a proponent for standing on BOSU balls while doing light dumbbell curls, I do think that in order to maximise your potential, there are some basic things you should be able to do extremely well, beyond just three big lifts. And if we're trying to be Batman, then there are some very advanced things too. I think, for example, that you can gain a lot by learning how to throw a punch or a kick. This is something I've been working on lately, since I've gotten pretty rusty since my karate days, and the amount of body control and unique strength development involved is really something that can benefit anyone. This is why gymnastic strength training and calisthenics are such great options for building real functional strength. They build control and power at unusual joint angles. But Batman isn't Nightwing. He isn't just interested in relative strength and being able to somersault is not his priority. While he can build strength with calisthenics, it is not the optimum solution for building raw, max strength. So what is? What marries the dynamic, functional nature of calisthenics with the powerful, explosive nature of heavy compound lifts? Leverage tools, offset exercises, I'm talking the club bell, the mace and the kettlebell. Why? Because the uneven weight distribution of these tools combined with momentum means that the precise angle and amount of force will change throughout a given movement. It also means you'll be forced to work your body at angles you typically may not be used to. You'll be working in all three planes, building immense rotational power and even strengthening the grip. Kettlebells and club training are the strength athlete's equivalent to calisthenics and it will give you the kind of strength you need to lift a crate over your head and then smash it down into an opponent. You know, the sort of stuff you do all the time. Consider this quote from Pavel Tatsulin. The get-up, the Turkish get-up that is, is an old-time strongman stunt that is the king of functional training. While everyone pays functional training lip service, the get-up delivers. When done with sufficient weight, it teaches the body many movement lessons that cannot be learned through exercises using balls, bands, and Ken and Barbie dumbbells. Once you have conquered the get-up, you'll be the master of your body, not its guest. The get-up does magic for one's shoulders, making them remarkably resilient against Brazilian jiu-jitsu shoulder locks and heavy bench presses. The get-up is also one of the best ab exercises. And what's more badass and Batman-like than swinging a mace around? But as this is Batman we're talking about, we need to go further. That's why I'm also going to be using hybrid exercises. Not to be confused with a complex, a hybrid exercise means combining one or more exercises into a single movement. This will be accomplished either by performing one compound lift immediately after the other, or by combining an isolation movement with a compound movement. For example, you could consider a burpee to be a form of hybrid exercise, because you're combining a push-up with a tuck jump. Another example might be to alternate push-ups and pull-ups, or kettlebell swings and a press or a clean. 
The reason these movements are so powerful is that in real life, you'll rarely perform a single movement in isolation. You don't just pick something up off the ground, you pick it up and carry it, and then put it down somewhere else. In my case recently, you might lift your baby up onto your shoulder, then pull the pram out the boot, and then assemble it with one hand whilst balancing said baby. This kind of training is much more skill-oriented, making it more nervous system intensive. That not only trains you to perform the movements themselves, but also to transition between them, which is very often where we are weakest. Another example on this program is the Renegade Row Push-Up. This involves balancing in a push-up position on two kettlebells or dumbbells, rowing one towards your body, performing a push-up, rowing the other one towards your body, doing another push-up, and then repeating. Not only does this train both the pulling and pushing movements due to the combination of a row and a press, but it also challenges you to maintain a rigid core and a straight posture with an unequal distributed weight. You have to resist the rotational force whilst lifting it. This builds oblique strength and can help you to maintain balance when wrestling or leaping over rooftops. And when trying to train so many different properties in one program like Batman, movements that give you two for one in this way become extremely useful. And on top of all that, using so many muscle groups in a single movement will force the circulation to switch rapidly from one muscle group to another. These movements are truly strength as a skill. The only problem with these hybrid movements is that they are exhausting and they involve so many muscle groups. The result is that if you use them too liberally, you will risk causing injury when fatigued. Not only that, but you also risk reaching failure long before any single muscle group is fully fatigued, thereby preventing hypertrophy or true max strength development. That's why my recommendation is to use hybrid exercises in combination with their simpler variations. In other words, you might perform kettlebell press glute bridges to failure, and then when you can carry on no more, switch to regular kettlebell presses. This is somewhat similar to a kind of power building routine or perhaps even CrossFit, except for we're reducing the risk of injury. And if you look at Batman's training, it often does involve these kinds of movements. In the next part of this series, I'll talk more about how to do this, and I'll also be introducing some more concepts into the program, including metabolic conditioning, calisthenics, brain training, and how you're gonna fit all of this into your week without completely burning out. So hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like, comment down below, that helps me out immensely. Let me know how you think Batman would train and how we could apply this ourselves. Stay tuned for part two, click the link in the description to check out the written version of this video and subscribe for much more like this. Oh, and Grant is coming back very soon with part four of the Nightwing workout, which looks like it's gonna be really awesome. Of course, if you want a far more detailed, super functional training program, then check out the link in the description down below where you can find my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. This goes into a ton of depth describing a periodized program taking you from beginner to Batman style functional athleticism. It includes nutrition advice, a diet plan, brain training, and much more. So if that sounds cool, then yeah, check it out. Thanks a ton for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.